The Egyptian Expeditionary Force spent the first three months of 1918 consolidating its hold on southern Judea and extending its reach across the Lower Jordan Valley in preparation for a large-scale offensive against the Ottoman forces in Palestine. In February and early March 1918, the EF carried out a series of local raids, capturing Jericho and the Jordan Valley, and establishing a new front line in the coastal plain north of the River Hoja. This provided a springboard for further operations by British and Anzac forces, not only in the Jordan Valley, but in the Moba Mountains to the east, and potentially towards the city of Amman and the strategically important Hijaz Railway. In March, the EEF commander, Lieutenant General Edmund Allenby, ordered a large-scale raid on Haman via the town of El Salt, which set astride from the only metal road running up from the Jordan Valley to the Moba Mountains. The raiding force was made up of the 60 London Division, the Anzac Mountain Division, and the Imperial Camel Corps, the ICC Brigade. It was named Shia Force, after the commander of the 60th London Division. Shia Force had four major tasks, crossing the River Jordan, capturing El Salt, crossing the Moba Mountains, capturing Amman and destroying the Hijaz Railway and the facilities that lay there. Allenby did not intend to hold Amman. The troops were to stay there as long as it took to destroy the railway, the station, a tunnel and a number of bridges. Shia Force was then to withdraw to the Jordan Valley, although a strong garrison would be detached to hold El Salt. With El Salt occupied, Ottoman forces would be locked out of the southern Jordan Valley and unable to tread in Allenby's right flank in future operations. Destroying the Hijaz railway linked to the Ottoman garrisons in Arabia as well would also assist in the Arab revolt there, and so thou in the minds of his counterparts as the likely direction for the next British offensive, inland or around the coast. Allenby knew the Arab Northern Army was raiding the Hijaz railway between Ma'an and Amman. If El Salt was taken, direct links between the two armies could be established. This was an ambitious plan, but arguably, worth the risk. The raid began on the night of the 21st. The raid began on the night of the 21st of March 1918. The raid began on the 21st of March 1918 with attempts to establish two bridgeheads on the Ottoman controlled east bank of the Jordan River. For the 60th division, it was Gorania, and for the Anzac Mountain division, it was Hijla. From the outset luck and the elements turned against the sheer force. Recent heavy rains made the crossing difficult and time consuming. It took two days to get the bulk of the troops across to the east bank, as sheer force began to advance into the Moba Mountains, the unseasonal heavy rain returned, and turning the mortared roads and the dirt tracks being used by some raiding units into quagmires. Assault was taken on the evening of the 25th of March, but the raid was already badly behind schedule. The hard slog over muddy broken ground and the cold and the rain exhausted the men and their mounts especially the camels. Two days later, still in the miserable conditions, the Anzac Mountain Division and the ICC Brigade reached the outskirts of Amman. By now, the headquarters of the Ottoman 4th Army knew what was happening and had reinforcements. For the next four days, the Anzac troopers and camelers, reinforced by the infantry brigades of the 60th Division, repeatedly attacked the city. Their final attack took place in the early hours of the 30th of March. Fred Sterling was among the men waiting for the attack. All close together, and with our rusty bayonets pointing to the sky, we had hardly got into line when the orders came. Move on, no shooting, no prisoners. The attack we all knew simply had to be successful. We had nothing behind us to fall back on, so fear. We all came, all close together, and with our rusty bayonets pointing to the sky, we had hardly got into line when the orders came. Move on, no shooting, no prisoners. The attack we all knew simply had to be successful. We had nothing behind us to fall back on, so failure and a counter-attack from Jacko meant the finish of things. The Camel Corps ranks, like us, were almost disastrously weak, so that we was a thin tide line set upon this desperate errand in the form of a half circle. The pale moon shone through the lead sky significantly well for us to see the way. It was blowing fairly strong, which helped the deadening of our footfalls. For an attack, the night was an ideal one. Although several Allied key positions were taken, notably Hill 3039, which was captured by the New Zealand Mountain Rifle Brigade, the 4th Battalion and the Imperial Camel Corps, the raiders failed to capture Amman itself. On the evening of the 30th of March, with ammunition and supply running low and the Ottoman counter-attack gaining in strength, Sheer force broke off into its attack and began to withdraw into the mountains. The original intention of holding El Salt was abandoned. The troops were then instead ordered to defend Gorani Bridgehead 
on the east bank of the Jordan River. The New Zealand Mountain Rifle Brigade went into reserve and bravat near Jericho. The Ray Coast attackers 1,348 casualties. It was the first real defeat suffered by the EEF since the Second Battle of Gaza. The, the Ottoman Turks tried to exploit the situation on the 11th of March by mounting a major attack on the Godahi bridgehead, but it was beaten off with heavy losses. Alibi still hoped to seize El Sol, so he ordered Major General Chaville, commander of the Desert Mountain Corps, to make another raid across the Jordan, with this as the prime objective. The force available to Chaville was essentially sheer force, plus the Australian Mountain Division. Though his objective was much more limited, the Ottoman troops were now on alert and had improved their defences in the sector. The attack began on the 30th of April and first went well. El Salt fell to the 3rd Australian Light Horse Brigade on that evening. The next day, however, strong Ottoman counter-attacks and the failure of promised local Arab tribal support to materialise forced the British and Anzac troops back to many places and left the Australian Light Horse and El Salt at a dangerously vulnerable position as well. Despite two days of fighting, the approaches to El Sol could not be secured, and on the 3rd and 4th of May, the town was evacuated. The next day, Chavel's forces retired across the River Jordan, having suffered more than 1,600 casualties. And that is the story of the race to El Sol and the Jordan Valley. Hope you guys enjoyed. Hope you learned something a bit breathy at the end, but it was pretty good. Anyway, hope you enjoyed this. Um, Jordan was kind of part of Syria and Palestine, so. There was not much. N there was nothing much besides Arab revolt and and the Vilayets before World War One and Arab nationalism. So, yeah, another thing through. A lot of these countries kind of had nationalism, but stuff like Saud Southern Arabia mostly and and Middle Arabia, if you will, and the Middle East kind of didn't have nationalism. There were either empires, or there were either this or that, or there were either, or there were even billets of certain countries. So, yeah, that was uh, yeah, that was a really hard one. But hope you enjoy this one though. Not a two-parter like Czechoslovakia, but still something about the Jordan, Jordan Valley, Jordan River, River Jordan, Jericho, El Salt, Helgel, and Govaranja, Govaranhaya, Govaranhi, Govaran yeah. Guavaran, yeah, sorry. So that's pretty much it. Hope you guys enjoyed all that Jordan stuff. And yeah, that's all I could find, but pretty good article. Pretty good, pretty good. Poem was pretty solid as well. Anyway, guys, hope you learned something, and I'll see you next time. 40 minutes, wow. GG.